Yeah, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much all for coming to the conference, um, to the workshop, sorry. Um, it's been great to see so many people here for all the sessions. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, what I've been working on at UCL and alongside Timo, Ignacia and Sri, all of whom you've heard from um, in the conference already. And this is um, my part of the work that we've been doing, which is all about writing um, the grid library for finite element and boundary element methods. So as a quick overview of sort of um, where this fits in with our previous research, um, we have been developing a boundary element library called BEMPP. Um, used to be called BEM++ because it started life in 2012 as a C++ library. Um, gradually then it moved to um, the third version. By, by the third version of this library, it was a C++ library with a Python interface. Um, and then in a few years after that, we rewrote it and called it BEMPPCL, at which point it was a Python library with OpenCL kernels for kind of the um, most compu computation expensive parts. Um, and it was at that point we kind of moved from calling it BEM++ to BEMPP, because at that point we realized there were there was not a single line of C++ left in this library, so the name was not very fitting. Um, then in 2020, um, work started on, um, Sri started his PhD and started working on a really good FMM code um, written in Rust that he presented, I think at the workshop last year and has chatted to people about in the question time um, this year, definitely. Um, and recently, this kind of, kind of a few couple of months ago this year, we released BEMPPRS version 1.0, which is our BEM library built in Rust, um, which we're starting to then use the FMM library to um, accelerate some of our boundary element methods stuff. Um, but since we did that release, um, we have undergone some work to kind of improve various areas of the code. And one area we spent a lot of time looking at is the grid library. And that's what we talk about today because we've started spinning out the grid library into its own library. So I'm going to talk about some of the design of the grid library and where we're kind of going with grids. Um, but where this fits into BEMPP is we kind of need these four things um, to do a full boundary method solver. We need finite elements, which essentially are some sort of polynomial functions that we can evaluate. We need grids and meshes, so some way of storing triangular grids um, or quadrilateral grids um, that we can use. We need something that then assembles um, operators over these grids, and then we need some linear algebra to solve the things we've assembled. So the linear algebra we sort of got covered by what Timo presented um, on Monday and did in his tutorial yesterday. Um, the final elements I've implemented, I'm not going to say too much about, but I'm going to briefly talk about today. Um, the assembly I will probably talk about next year, um, but the grids is where we're going to focus today. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how we've designed kind of the traits for elements. So anyone who is familiar with finite elements, this should seem reasonably familiar. Anyone not, I'll try and fill you in some of the details. Um, so this is what our element trait looks like. Um, so it has one type, which is the, kind of the scalar type. So maybe we're using F32 or F64. It's just what we're using as kind of our value type um, when we want to evaluate our element. And it has the kind of things you expect a finite element to have. So anyone who doesn't do finite elements, essentially the finite element is a, is a way of defining polynomials over each cell in the mesh. So say you say you've got triangles in the mesh, um, it's a way of defining piecewise polynomials in each triangle. So this the finite element lives on one triangle and you can do various things to it. Like you can ask it, what is my cell type? So am I on a tri to find a triangle or am I to find a quadrilateral? What is my degree? So what's the highest polynomial that's involved in me? That's what we call embedded super degree. What's the dimension? So what is the dimension of my polynomial space? Um, the value size and value shape, they're there to allow us to do vector valued elements, which is something we've not implemented yet, but it's there for the future. Um, tabulate is a function which allows us to evaluate these polynomials at lots of points. Um, and then we have some information about how you map between different cells and how you define the degrees of freedom of your finite element space, um, which are not that important to this talk here, but essentially, Anything in Benson's trait is going to be some sort of polynomial, most likely, that you can evaluate at lots of points. And as long as it can do that, you can fit into this trait structure and then it will work. Um, anyone that does know lots about finite elements, we've designed this with the thought of finite elements in mind, but we would think that this element trait could also be applied to virtual elements or other types of spaces people use. It's not just limited to polynomials. Um, and our implement element implementation looks something like this. So we base it on the Kiele definition, which anyone that does find elements will know about. And you define all these things like this. I'm not going to dwell on this too much today. Um, I'm going to focus more in today's talk on our grid traits, because this is where we've been spending a lot of time working. So a grid, in our way of thinking about it, is a, a grid or a mesh of triangular or quadrilateral, or quadrilateral cells, um, or perhaps interval cells if you're doing like a one-dimensional mesh and typically we have these 
So our typical use is that we have grids of triangles or grids of quadrilaterals that are kind of two dimensional surfaces, but embedded in 3D space. So maybe like you can imagine a sphere where you've drawn loads of triangles on the surface as the picture of the kind of thing we're trying to store here. Um, and this is what our grid traits looks like. Um, so we store a few things um, like the dimensions. So the geometric dimension is like we're embedded in 3D space. Topological dimension is like when I said it's a two dimensional surface. So typically for our applications, GDIM would be three, TDIM would be two. Um, and then we saw a lot of types, which I'm going to go into in a second. And all the grid, all the functions the grid have is ways of looking up certain entities. So you can say, I want the entity of dimension one of local index six, which will give you the edge because dimension one things are edges um, of degree six uh, of, of index six um, within your grid. Um, what's more interesting is how we then store these um, um, store these in uh, kind of entity op um, uh, entity objects um, inside everything else. Um, oh yeah, was one thing we did um, have a bit long discussion about here was what type to return here, and um, we discussed a lot with one to kind of a box type or an entity type eventually went to the entity type. The downside of this is that all our different types of entity then have to have the same type. So like triangles have to be the same type as intervals, um, which we've designed the trait to be able to do that. Um, but the bonus is then we know the types at compile time and um, we don't have to have box things all over the place and memory assignment that may come with that. Um, although we have also just discussed more recently, we've got some ideas of how we could actually work having different types for different dimensions into this but I'll, i'm not going to say too much more about that because that's still we're still deciding exactly where to go forward with that um and uh um yeah this is the this is the trait for an entity so this is some entity in the mesh so this might be a triangle in the mesh or it might be an edge between two triangles it might be a point in the mesh in the mesh it's any kind of entity within the mesh and it has these kind of sensible things in the trait. So it has an entity type, and that is what tells you like triangle, quadrilateral, or interval, or point. Um, it has a local index and a global index. The, where global, we're talking about MPI here. So if we parallelize these, it can have a local index on the current process and a global index in the entire mesh. Um, and it also stores a geometry and topology and some ownership information. Again, that's for MPI. I'm gonna say more about the ge geometry and topology and how those work, I think, on the next couple of slides. Um, here we go. So the topology, um, and the geometry, this is following um, some inspiration from kind of how Phoenix and Dune both store their grids um, within their C++ libraries, where essentially the topology is where we can ask questions like, here's a triangle, which vertices is next to that triangle? Or here's a triangle, which edge is next, next to that triangle? Whereas the geometry, we can ask questions like, um, here's a triangle um, and here's its vertices, where are they in 3D space? And this is kind of a nice way of decoupling two parts of the mesh so you can treat them entirely separately. Um, and once you kind of get your head around those kind of ways to think about what topology and geometry are, um, it makes sense the kind of things we've got here. So topology can kind of iterate over sub-entities um, or iterate over entities that are connected to you. So you can say, if, if your topology is the topology of an edge, you can iterate over the triangles connected to that edge, for example. Or, if you're, you're, or, or you can iterate over the vertices of that edge so you can kind of go upwards in dimension or downwards in dimension we have those iterators and for the geometry it makes sense we can ask things like how many points are there in on this on this entity and what are the what are the um coordinates the entities and then what's the volume um and we're doing like a generalized volume here so a volume of one of a zero dimensional thing is zero a dimension a volume of a one dimensional thing is that the length of it and then the volume of a two dimensional thing is the area um is what we're calling volume here and those um, these are all kind of well-defined for entities of kind of all different dimensions there. And on top of this, we can also have some other optional traits, such as the GMesh IO, which is um, for inputting, outputting um, to the GMesh grid format, which I'm not going to say more about, but you can imagine you could build lots of kind of different input output formats on top and just implement them where those formats are supported for certain grids. Um, and so, as I kind of mentioned before, inspired by the way kind of Phoenix does it mostly here, um, we split the storage of the topology and geometry up completely as well. And I've kind of mentioned here, these are the kind of questions we can ask in geometry and topology. And we have, so we have struct objects that then will store these things completely separately. Um, the only things in common are we have kind of, uh, um, they use the same indexing for the points so that you can actually connect the two up when you need to, to work out which points are on your current cell. Um, and it looks like the grid storage itself looks something like this. So we have two types of grid. 
which are the single ele element grid. Um, that's essentially where every cell is the same type. So maybe it's all triangles or it's all quadrilaterals. And we have the mixed grid where we have kind of some triangles and some quadrilaterals, um, which then works slightly differently because you need kind of an extra loop inside various functions to loop over the different cell types. Um, and except since I wrote these slides, but I realized that these two geometry types are actually very similar because the geometry is just storing um, three dimensional um, for points in three-dimensional space, um, we actually could use the same geometry for both these types. So one of my big to-dos is, is to merge these two into the same type. So we have different topology types, but the same geometry type, because we think, I'm, I'm confidently think we can make them the same type there. Um, so just a couple of slides about BenPP to finish off. Um, so first of all, we do we did release a kind of first version of BenPP, which is very much not useful for big problems yet, but it's kind of a uh, um, proof of concept that we can get these kind of things working. Um, and I wanted to show off that we've got working with um, Criterion, we've got benchmarks working, which are running three times a week on the workstation, um, on the workstation we've got in UCL. So if you go to bimpp.com slash benchmarks, you can see a lovely plot of kind of where our current speed is. And you can also spot where I made a mistake because the runtime went out massively. And then when I fix the mistake where the runtime goes down massively. But we're kind of using this to keep an eye on is our performance kind of staying relatively consistent? Um, and so just to conclude, um, we've implemented these traits. We think they're general enough to support kind of any type of grid that we want to support in future. Um, and the future work is now to get our BEM library work, working again on these reworked re grids and then to start looking at um, parallel assembly with FMM based on what um, Timo spoke about last year. And with that, I'm gonna say thank you very much. Um, for listening and hand back to Ignacio.